Without the proper lighting, paint correction is almost impossible to carry out. In this video, we're going to go over how to make the most out of your lighting situation while you're working on a project, and how to get the most bang for your buck in the lighting department without having to break the bank. Stick around. Welcome to the Modern Professional Polishers Academy, where we answer daily questions, give you tips and tricks, and motivation to help you navigate the world of paint correction. So when it comes to lighting, everybody has their own personal preference on how to illuminate a vehicle. Some people like to work in the dark with one light. Some people like to work with maybe one or two spotlights on. A lot of folks like to work with a room full of light. It just depends on what works for you. What folks don't understand is it's really all about your eyes. I can't take a lot of, uh, of, of light from say bar lights, the longer lights. Some people can work in a room full of them. I can't stare at too many of them at one time. So to get that out of the way, don't study everybody's light methodology. Everybody has their own opinion. And, uh, and some people have to work in the dark because just again, too much light can be a problem. Um, some people need all the light in the world. It just depends on your preference. So the next thing that you need to focus on is not buying the most expensive lights on the market. They're great, you know, whatever brand it may be, they, they're great, but you can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, Sam's Club, and grab a 20, $25, some of them even $15 for a good spotlight, uh, LED, proper color, and you can do professional and quality work with these lights. When I started out, I didn't go out and spend thousands on lights. I spent about a hundred bucks and got about five or six lights from, from Lowe's as they were being discontinued. I got a $15 a piece and I, I might've spent a hundred bucks. And these lights are sharper and cleaner looking than a lot of the two, $300, $400 lights that are, are very popular in the detail world. So that is something that you need to keep you know top of mind that you don't have to break your, your budget. just. To go get lights you need to buy tools as well and if you can light that vehicle up and see the swirls the oxidation the scratch whatever it may be that you have to get out if you can see all of that with the light that you have and it's not going to kill your eyes by the end of the project go get that light so we use a very uh, budget friendly setup uh, a lot of the lights come from like i said lowe's home depot i'm always testing things out some of them are detailer specific uh, but I, I like to go for the cheaper lights myself just to prove to people that you can do high-end work without going to get that light that is so fancy. They look great. They look amazing. But um, you, you have to remember you have tools to buy as well. You know, and if you already have the tools, if you want the lights, cool. You know, we have a couple of expensive lights here. But uh, it just depends on what kind of purpose they're going to serve. So... That's a very important part uh, that you need to keep keep front of mind. And then uh, the next the next thing you need to think about is the fact that there's a, a specific light for a specific job. So a lot of people might have a room full of you know the longer bar lights, LED lights. Those might not help you when it's a vehicle you know covered in, in swirls. I learned that the shape of the defect can determine the the shape of the light. So if you're working with a lot of scratches those long bar lights work because they're the same shape as the defect. But if you have a lot of swirls, you need spotlights for sure. You can still have the, your, your longer LED lights, but you need to have a spotlight present because I, I've done it time and time again where I'll work just with the bar lights alone and then I'll come around, you know, say I do a driver's side first. Driver's side looks good with the bar lights only. Then I go test the passenger side and I'll break out the spotlights and it just looks so much sharper and cleaner. So once I finish that second side and go back to the first, that first side I missed a bunch of swirls because the, the bar lights just weren't lighting it up properly. So remember that the defect is going to be the same shape of, as the light. So a circular light is going to light up that circular swirl, you know, with no problem. And then the, the more of a uh, pinpoint of a light you can get, the tighter the light, the more swirl you'll see as well. So um, I have some, 3,000 3, lumen uh, Honeywell lights. They work really good. They're a square shape, but they also are not circular, so I can miss a lot of swirls with those as well. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just lay out my, my Honeywell lights next to um, 
the, the spotlights that I have are by Utilitech. They are, I want to say that that light is discontinued, but there's another company that uh, may have taken over that, that light and uh, a couple of their, their designs. But I'll have my pin lights, my, my pinpoint lights right next to the square light. And then I'll have like one every other, you know, pin light, square light, pin light, square light. And it'll make sure I'm not missing a thing. The square lights, the 3000 lumen, uh, they are super bright, very clean, so they can pick up what the 1500 lumen light might not pick up. So it's good to have a little uh, variety. It also helps out with your before and after photos as well. So really keep that, keep that you know, in mind as well. Your, your photos, if you want to really wow a customer, if you're trying to show a customer the before and afters of what, what it is you're doing, or if you're just trying to get people in, uh, from showing off your portfolio, you need to have more than one light on the vehicle. It can be kind of tough to see exactly what somebody's working on just by a before and after in one spot with one one pin light or one whatever type of light it may be. You also have some, you may have some competition in your area. And if your photo looks just like theirs, it's a toss up between who that client is gonna choose. Um, and then the last thing is you have different color, uh, color temps, different uh, Kelvins for different color vehicles. So darker vehicles, you're gonna use uh, softer lights, maybe like a 5,000 uh, 5, Kelvin or you know, 5,000 to 6,000. And then on lighter color vehicles, you're gonna use something warmer, maybe 4,000, 4,500 Kelvin. Uh, you, the defects are gonna show up a lot better when you use the proper uh, color temp for the color vehicle that you're uh, working on specifically. So those are just a few tips for the lighting uh, when it comes to you working on your projects and it will make or break your experience. I actually almost quit paint correction a couple times because I was only working with one or two spotlights and then I get stuck outside late at night at a customer's house you know, while I was mobile. And it was just a fight to try to make sure I got every defect out with one spotlight. Now if I had three or four of those lights, a couple up top, a couple down below, that would have been great. But at that time I only had one light and it almost made me quit. So having the right amount of light can make you hate or love the job that you do. This video is sponsored by the Professional Polishers Academy. Head over to ProPolishersAcademy.com today and receive the first full course when you're enrolled for free. This includes all of the tools, products, and pads that are necessary for beginning and paint correction. This is our entire system all laid out for you in one course to help you get a jump start in the world of paint correction. Once again, enroll for free today and receive the first full course. And if you like it, enroll and become a permanent member and select one of the two options that are available for tuition. All right, that's it for today. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, those points, it was a quick video, but it took me some time to come up with, you know, with, with that, that mindset when it comes to having inexpensive lights and doing work that's just as good as the expensive light. and the whole you know, defect being the same shape as your light concept. I've never heard anybody talk about that before, but it definitely is applicable every day to what we do. So take this info, run with it. If you like the video, please like, subscribe. Um, if you're looking for any of the uh, Pro Polishers Academy merch, we have it uh, listed in the, in the description down below. Link is below. And if you wanna learn more, you can go in and join the Pro Polishers Academy. The link is in the description for that as well. We'd love to have you in there. We have a bunch of great guys who are either just getting into paint correction or they're you know seasoned a little bit and they're helping out the guys who need to get going. And they themselves may need to learn a new trick or two, uh, whether it be with paint correction or, or marketing, whatever the case may be. Uh, this is something that we haven't seen before and we're just trying to help people get around that learning curve of paint correction because it can take years and it's still gonna take you some time, but at least you won't be wasting uh, your money, you know, doubting yourself. You'll have a, a real community of people. You won't have to go to a, you know, a forum from 10 years ago trying to figure out answers like I did. I was on forums all the time trying to crack the code for something that, uh, you know, for a polish problem that wasn't in existence a decade ago. So this is definitely gonna help you uh, fix some problems you know, right now that are current today. So that's it for today. We'll see you next week. Peace.